speaking from Washington, D.C., here is Florida's United States Senator, George Smathers. One of the most historic structures in our nation is currently the subject of feverish debate. I refer to our United States Capitol, where I'm speaking from today. Plans have been approved by a special leadership committee which called for spending some 34 millions of dollars to expand and replace the west front of the Capitol building, thereby making the building safer as well as creating new office space, restaurants, an auditorium, and such other facilities. Frankly, I'm a little disturbed by these plans. First of all, because I think an expenditure of this size is not warranted while the Vietnam conflict requires so heavy an expenditure. Secondly, I am concerned that the proposed reconstruction project will trample on history and alter drastically some important links with the past. Let's rather briefly review some facts about this United States Capitol. Its hilltop site was chosen in 1789 by President George Washington, along with Major Lafont, the architect who created the plan for the city of Washington itself. President Washington laid the cornerstone for the Capitol in 1793. The building itself is one year younger than the other major landmark in this city, which is the White House. But to me, the Capitol is a true distillation of America, a place of inspiration that touches everyone, no matter how many times they come here. And yet the Capitol is no tomb. It's a place where history is daily made and where the new is constantly reminded of the old. And when I sit in the Senate chamber, I know that only a few feet away from my desk is one which once belonged to Daniel Webster, or another of more recent times which was once the desk of our beloved John F. Kennedy. I'm aware as I walk through the corridors that this old building has felt the pounding feet of British soldiers who burned it in 1814. Here, during the Civil War, Union soldiers camped on the grounds and baked bread in the ovens located in the Capitol. So it is a historic place, a mixture of the beautiful and the old and the new, but tied physically and symbolically to our past. Now, I am also well aware that the west front of this structure is deteriorating. It is a native sandstone which is crumbling and losing its strength. However, I think that this west wall can be braced and repaired for a fraction of the proposed $34 million estimated cost. Construction on the Capitol grounds has had a habit of going a little beyond cost estimates. For instance, when the east front of the Capitol was remodeled a few years ago, it was proposed as an $11 million job but it ended up costing almost uh, twice that amount. The Rayburn House office building across the hill is another project which soared in price, its final cost exceeding some 100 millions of dollars. So I would like to see some rethinking on the proposed capital reconstruction project at this time. The Vietnam War and its heavy cost is certainly a prime factor for deferring or scaling down the remodeling. We already have precedent for this, in the case of a home for the vice president, where funds for construction have been withheld because of our obligations in Vietnam. And also we must remember that the city of Washington has retained much of its beauty because it has endeavored to keep new construction in harmony with the historic buildings. Thus any exterior changes in one of the most historic buildings in Washington should indeed be carefully considered. Our national capital must of course be kept safe but let's think out plans to alter its appearance and shape because we are dealing not with just any building, but the repository of the American dream. The Capitol is not just a building for senators and congressmen, it is a building for all Americans, and it deserves our most careful consideration. Thank you very much, Senator George Smathers. I return you now to your station announcer. <laughs>